so I'm Raz. Uh, I'm a research associate up at the Middle East. And uh, the last couple of years, I've been working on the Sudbury crater geology uh, on some geophysics, deep ge geophysics that's been we've been carrying out there. Um, and it's a CAD funded project. Um, so I work. I work um, closely in collaboration with uh, uh, Glencore and Valley. It's really important uh, partners in this uh, uh, research project here. And um, today I'm going to show you some geology and some 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 of the deeper seeded structures and and mineralized structures uh, from the northeastern impact crater. So, um, as Ross said earlier that we kind of, the Middle Earth project kind of moved away a little bit from the transect scale uh, research and uh, so I'm going to be a, a, a party pooper here and, and bring the transects back into the equation and uh, we got to focus on the Sudbury transect right down here in the southern uh, province, southern uh, superior province. And uh, just zooming in on the Sudbury structure, Sudbury uh, uh, basin, right here. You can see it's cover. It covers some uh, a big chunk uh, of the Superior Province, Achaean rocks, so mostly Levac gneiss or gneisses. Um, a smaller chunk. Uh, it covers a smaller chunk of the Huronian supergroup uh, sediments. You can see the Sudbury is right down here. And uh, the Greenwood Front goes uh, right down here in the south uh, east. The structure itself is characterized by uh, the Sudbury Ignis complex, which is the melt sheet that goes around right here with, on the rim. And it's in the middle. It has the f fallback pressure and, and uh, infill sediments on top in the basin. And in this case, I just put the stratigraphy. So the Levac Nice is, is, is really a, a huge chunk of the foot wall underneath the, the uh, basin. So um, just for you that's not familiar with the Sudbury crater and crater geology, and, and uh, I just want to put, put, the, put it into a, a larger scale uh, impact crater perspective, uh, the Sudbury uh, structure. And, what we know now is, uh, is it's possible, most likely a multi-ring impact crater, and there's a lot of, uh, there's some geology evidence and structural measurements uh, suggesting that it's a multi-ring impact crater, Sudbury. Um, uh, evidence shows that the ground zero, so the impact point of impact, is right here, so south of the, the current uh, Sudbury structure. And then there's ring one and ring two, which has some evidence of, uh, of laying in these positions here. The ring one is the uh, central uplift. So that's the, the whole, the area where there's a huge rebound and structural uplift uh, after the, the impact. And then the blue ring uh, represent the transient cavity. So the crater rim, so that's the outer Extent so that's the extent of the the melt sheet doing impact. So the melt sheet uh, reached most likely this uh, uh, blue ring right here. So and you can see the current position of the Sudbury structure is is located right here. So I've been doing a cross section here based on, on, on uh, many other uh, uh, researchers in, in the Sudbury uh, crater. And the, the central uplift may go all the way out here, approximately uh, uh, 45 kilometers. And the last 20 kilometers represent this area here is the annular trough where you have uh, uh, the collapse of the transient cavity, collapse of the crater rim, where you, the Huronian outliers gets downsloped, uh, or like 
blocks of the Huronian rocks get uh, downfolded inward motion and get and therefore after so this uh, this diagram here shows after the impact but after today after five or six kilometers of erosion we have some of these Huronian outliers actually still preserved up in the north so this is one model uh, to work from uh, I think most reliable right now so to my project uh, I've been studying the line 182 here that uh, goes north south south north here and uh, just to show you that other litter probe lines has been carried out also uh, this line right here it crosses the SIC, uh, SIC right here but it doesn't go into the footwall which is a little bit of a shame but in this project we actually cross the footwall so we can get a bigger better picture of the contact relation between the melt sheet and the and the, or the SIC and the footwall gneiss which is uh, very important in, in, in the architect creating a geo, uh, geo, geological architecture in the, the area. So, but just to zoom in here, there's a little more detailed geology here. There's the Benny's uh, Abitibi Greenstone Belt part right here, and there's some Huronian up here. But you can see the Trantec crosses uh, a big chunk of the SIC right here. And what I shown here with crosses is actually two uh, uh, deep drill holes from Glen Hole, uh, Glen, <laughs> Glen Hole, uh, Glencore and Valley, who has conducted very deep uh, drill holes in the, in the SIC right here. So I've been using those to constrain the, the architecture of the, the, of the uh, crater and the SIC geology right here. This is the seismic showing here and the, the geology is on top here, uh, the, the surface geology. And you can see the valley uh, drill hole goes right down here to 3.1 kilometers approximately and the, and the Glencore goes down to 2.8 something. So this is, I think, the deepest drill holes that's been drilled in, 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 the, in the crater. Uh, I, I was told that the valley uh, a hole took six months to drill for them. Um, so, uh, and a big chunk of uh, money. So, these are very pristine core samples and very important in the interpretation of the crater uh, geology. I'll come back to in the interpretation of the seismic here a little later once we have looked at the geology of these uh, drill core. And uh, the valley drill core and the Glencore Glen drill hole, the geology is shown here. I didn't do much of that. Uh, the valley and Glencore people uh, uh, core locked the, the entire core here. I, I was out looking at some of the basement uh, rocks or the football rocks here. But this is the rough geology of, the, of these drill cores. So you have the granite fire here that transits, transits into a quartz garbro and norite and then into a, a more gneissic, presciated, uh, uh, presumably a crater floor. Uh, and then they drill further down into the, the footwall, the more massive gneiss uh, underneath. So that's very important uh, uh, anchor to have when we have to interpret the geophysics, of course. Here's just a, uh, to show the, the actual uh, footwall gneiss uh, underneath uh, the, the SIC. This is how it looks. A large uh, megacrystic feldspars in there and uh, a, a nice foliation of fabric to it. We have a, maybe an eight states very close to half, uh, around 2672, Mike? around there, possible aids of this, the protolith aids of this gneiss. Uh, so that fits within the range of the Levac gneiss uh, complex. So we can now put the geology on to these drill holes. So uh, 
we can now start to interpret the, the geophysics a little more uh, concrete and a little more precise, hopefully. Uh, I just showed, showed you uh, the, yeah, so the dual course, the, the geology is on there. So, so uh, other interesting features in this seismic is the, I put a big question mark, question mark here because there's a zone here that has a, it has a lot of noise in the seismic. So I was never actually s uh, certain about this area and I was a little bit afraid of interpreting that. So um, what Rad Radges has been doing is to try and do a density uh, modeling or gravity modeling over this area uh, to see if we can see the contrast between some of the lithologies uh, in depth. So here's just a uh, uh, the th uh, gravity modeling that Rattis has been doing between, so what he's been doing is we're looking at the, the base of the granophyre, because that's where the biggest contrast is in density between the granophyre and the, the actually uh, gabbro and norite underneath. So the granophyre is around 2.7 or 2.68 uh, gram per cubic centimeters. So when Rattis did that, we can actually, what we see is we, we, if this is the, then represent the bottom of the, the base of the granophyre, we have a big anticline coming up like that here. And in 3D, uh, in the 3D section here, you can see the anticline goes from a north, well, southeast to northwest uh, striking feature uh, anticline. Um, so that was pretty interesting because when you look at the seismic actually, you can actually see this feature in the seismic. So it, the seismic cats, it cats up some of the, the jolly underneath. So that got kind of, I got more confident in when we get this gravity modeling going on the jolly. so that's great. Um, so this is just to show you the, the jolly as it, it looks now, the, the one of the like, a late stage interpretation of the, the geology. Um, and I highlighted some of the main uh, reflectors uh, in, the, in the football rocks right here. And uh, you can see this big uh, anticline right here. And uh, the reason for this anticline is probably due to the Pinocchian uh, erosion uh, or event that that thrusted blocks in a northern directed uh, uh, in a northern direction. So these blocks kind of got pushed up and uh, uh, generated thrust faults and f and folding in the in the in the basin. So that's probably one of those you see right here um, in the just north of the central part of the basin. Um, yeah, so another really important feature, and I kind of highlighted it here with a, with a, with a huge vertical fault that goes down in the footwall gneiss, which I find very in, uh, interesting. Uh, oops, it has, it almost has two different gneiss domains. One is the, uh, the northern part here in the Levac gneiss has a more sub horizontal uh, dipping or sub horizontal reflectors, whereas the southern part of the, the football domain is more uh, concave or southern dipping uh, reflectors that kind of link to the, the, the architecture of the basin itself. So, and there's no doubt in my mind when you see the seismic that, that this fault is a really uh, a deep uh, going fault, and uh, bear in mind. This is a five kilometers erosion or something. So, so this fault has probably gone down 13 kilometers. Uh, so what we see here is seven, eight kilometers, but then five kilometers erosion. So, so it's, a, it's a very pronounced uh, fault. And uh, I'm working now with uh, this project. Uh, John Spray from the University of New Brunswick is, is very interesting in this uh, Two from a more crater geology point of view, and 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 this, we kind of start to think about ring structures and and uh, 
it could be part of an inner ring in the Sudbury crater, which is uh, very interesting because then you can kind of uh, uh, come up with a, a better size model of the, the crater. So uh, before lunch here, I just want to show you some of the MT work that uh, Ademola has carried out, which is really uh, very great data. Uh, so what you see here, I'll just put the drill core on. So of course they didn't drill three kilometers down with, if, if there was nothing to hunt down there. So um, what you see here is actually uh, a nickel sulfide, nickel copper sulfide uh, deposit. So this is how that looks in an MT uh, section. Um, so there's a huge uh, nickel sulfide deposit down there and that they are very interesting in developing. Um, and it's right in the crater floor uh, on the border boundary between uh, the, the sublayer and, and, the, and the gneiss, the, the brecciated gneiss. And it's related to uh, an embedment, mineralized embedment structure. So here I just made a fence diagram and just to confuse you, now we're looking actually this is north and this is south. Um, so a take home message here, we got some uh, different transects now, 0.5 kilometers in, in between each transect. And this is the, the actual transect line. So this is uh, along the, the 182 line here. And this C1 feature is what I showed you before. This is that one. Uh, you can see it the development of that as you move north or as you move east. Uh, as you move east, the C1 feature kind of moves to the northeast or east-northeast and it kind of decreases in uh, magnitude and uh, in conductivity as you move further uh, northeast. And uh, I think this mineralization and this uh, unit is, is linked to the offset dike that goes out right here, so that's the reason why. So the embayment, the keel mineralized structure is, is, is a big unit right here, but it, it kind of uh, uh, tailing off here to the northeast, uh, and it's linked to the, the uh, offset dikes right here, where there's the Whistle mine is right here, and the Podolsky mine is uh, right here on this offset dike. So that's pretty cool that we can do that with with the MT and uh, get a better idea of this mineralized uh, structure. Yeah, so I think I will end there and uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh